What's up, everybody? Um, this is the breakdown for Saturday's three-game slate. Um, as you can see, not wearing a headset, but the audio sucks. Uh, Yeti microphone not in yet, but as I was prepping, I broke my headset. So this is recording off of the microphone on the webcam, so apologies for how crappy this sounds. But this will be the only time that this happens. New microphone gets here today. Anyway, three games late, and boy is it ugly. I might end up skipping. Um, I, there's Unless we get some crazy news that opens up value. It's a lot of teams that don't play guys big minutes, and... It's really crappy teams. It's just, it's so ugly. It's so ugly. Um, so let's, let's talk about it. I'm going to go into a little bit more depth than I normally do since there's only three games to get through. And you kind of need to unearth some gems in order to make a three-game slate be worth it. I really like not having this... Um, headset on. It makes this a lot easier to do. Anyway, first game up is the Bulls. They play the Heat. They have the lowest implied total, 94.75 points. It is worst, and it is worse by a bundle. The next highest team is the Heat, the team they play, and they're seven point, basically seven point underdogs. So the Bulls are going to be a tough spot to find value. And that's not terribly shocking because they suck. So I'm going to pull up the Bulls um, data from cleaning the glass to see if we can glean any sort of positives from this crappy, crappy slate and crappy, crappy team. Which I'm not confident in. Let's open up a short list. Shortlist doesn't really apply on a three-game slate because the shortlist is already made for you. There's not enough teams out there um, to make this easy. Everybody sort of needs to be in play in a way. Alrighty. Bulls. So nothing looked good on the surface to me. Like, none of these guys are super good values. The only person that has any sort of quote-unquote value would be Blakeney at 3,100, and he's only projected for 20 minutes, so I don't really see where that gets you. Um, the hope is that some, some something pops for Justin Holiday, Denzel Valentine, Markinen, Lopez, or Dunn. Those are the guys that are I have projected to get more than 25 minutes. Um, so we'll see how that looks. So Miami um, gives up a ton of short mid-range shots I'm all over the place. And they are the worst team in the league at giving up um, just general mid-range opportunities. So that's good. Um, they're also the best team in the league at taking away threes. So we know what we need to look for here. Um, guys like Justin Holiday and Markinen look awful particularly marketing. Um just, you know, he gets 54% of his shot attempts from three, and 47% of all of his threes come from the corner, which the Heat also take away. So, at this point, I don't like any part of that. Um, I do want to take a look and see who takes the most mid-range shots which would be Robin Lopez, 60% of his shots come in the mid-range, um, particularly in the short mid-range, you know, he gets 30% of his shots. Um, he's like a 50-50 guy for points and filling out uh, the stat sheet, so Robin Lopez for sure is on my list, on my short list, and, uh, which is troublesome because you can only play one center, and there are two good ones going tonight. After that, um, Blakeney doesn't really have enough like stats at this point. He's, he hasn't played very much, um, so I don't really trust that, especially in a cash scenario. And Chris Dunn, who doesn't really do a lot of scoring from a fantasy perspective, 
uh, shooting the ball, but he does get to the mid-range a lot. He's also a little limited in stats, so let's see you know, how Chris Dunn did last year with his frequency, if it's a similar... Okay, so even in Minnesota, you know, he lived in the mid-range. He's just not a very good shooter. So I'm willing to take a look at Chris Dunn as well. You have to cast a wide net, but I'm not looking at anybody else on the Bulls. Now, salary-wise, um, I think they, Chris Dunn and Lopez both look fine on FanDuel and DK. Um, I don't really want to end up with any Bulls, but if I do, it's going to be one of those guys. I'm not going to be using Holiday, Markkanen, Denzel Valentine, any, any of those guys. Um, Dunn put up 9.2 in his last outing. Which is not good. He needs twenty. He needs thirty-two and a half. Holy balls! Thirty-two and a half to hit five X. Which he's done twice in his last six. So we'll see. On to the Heat. Also not as interesting, but at least they're playing the Bulls, and the Bulls suck. As I mentioned before, the Heat have the second worst implied total. But it's hard to really care too much about that sort of stuff. Um, let's pull the, the heat shooting frequency. These three game slates are tough, especially in a situation where if you're, you know, you want to try to focus on those 3.30 games. You don't want any late news to sink you in the 6 o'clock game. So it's tricky. Okay, so Chicago. Um, gives up a ton of long mid-range shots. Not very good. Reading that correctly, right? Yeah. Ton of long mid-range. Um, they basically take away the short uh, mid-range stuff, so just outside of the rim range. Um, they let people get to the rim. No real impediments here, so since they're the worst at the not necessarily the worst at the rim but i'm going to get more shots at the rim i'm going to sort by rim percentage first and see what we get um again nobody stands out from a value perspective you know Olynyk's not getting enough minutes for this to be interesting i have him at 20 but everybody's sort of in the mid tier for minutes right now so what we need to do is try to unearth somebody that's uh decent um, let's think about this here. White side. I'd rather have Robin Lopez than White side. And I think if I were going to play anybody be tragic man the, the heat do not look like an appealing team tonight and that'll be one of the situations where someone in the Tyler Johnson Josh Richardson you know Wayne Ellington Justice Winslow window just goes bananas if anybody's looking for an iPad Pro case 70 bucks. Shout out to Wirecutter. I think Dion Waiters is going to be the, the only spot that I would look at. And I don't even like that. He's not great value. He needs 33 to hit 5x. Um, apparently I deleted the formulas that helped me move a little bit faster, but... Let's see how Waiters has been. Oh, okay, he's not there. So Waiters points per minute projects out to 24. I've got him projected for 23. He needs 33. So you're betting on a Waiters hot night. I don't. I don't see it. I don't like anything from the Heat. When I ran my optimizer to start, I got Tyler Johnson. I got some Kelly Olynyk, which I don't trust, and I got one Josh Richardson. 
So I guess I should look at both of them before I completely disregard them. At least they're next to each other here. So they both have very, very similar shooting profiles. Josh Richardson projects to get a couple more minutes at a slightly less salary, so I guess I'll take a look at Josh Richardson. But this is it's just not the game. Um, now I'll move on to Minnesota where we might have a bigger discussion because I think that stacking Minnesota is almost a necessity, even though they're huge favorites. Um, so as you can see, you know, Tibbs notorious for playing starters a lot of minutes. We only get one option across the board for all of them. Um, and all five guys are in play right now. I'm just going to go look and see who I think is the best. So I'm going to pull the Timberwolves shot distribution. I hope that I don't find that Towns is the best option um, because I'd love to roll out Robin Lopez and save money. But, you know, best laid plans. All right, so there's the Timberwolves. They are playing Phoenix. Phoenix isn't bad at taking away threes. Uh, pretty shite at everything else. Who gets to the rim the most? Taj. So, right off the bat, um, Taj needs 28 to hit 5x. I, that's where I've got him in my blended rating right now. 33 minutes, 5,600. Um, I'd be shocked if I don't have Taj Gibson. And then, just from a, a, an overall standpoint, because really what we're looking at are these top five guys. I know I've got Taj already, so let's look at the next four. Um, from a Wiggins perspective... He's going to take 77% of his shots from the mid-range and at the rim. I think that fits well, so I'm, I'm comfortable with Wiggins. Um, honestly, I think that I'm comfortable with everybody, which I don't love. That gets a little scary. I think... I don't think there's anything wrong with taking any of the five Timberwolves starters. I know you're probably looking for a little bit more um, interesting information, but I think that the guys you end up taking here will be based on the guys that you take elsewhere. Everything that you can get from the Timberwolves starting five is beneficial, in my opinion. So I'm going to run them all the way down the list, and we'll see how it shakes out after the rest of the games. And this is like I mean, I get it. This is crap analysis. <laughs> You're not I'm not uh I'm not confused by this at all. Um It's a three game slate. Like this is the sort of way you need to break it down, in my opinion. Um off to Phoenix. Probably hear my puppies barking. Phoenix with the 107.75 imply total, which is third. And it's a it's a real tough one. Booker is questionable right now, and nobody else outside of TJ Warren plays minutes that I trust. Um, if someone's going to win money tonight based on getting Sun centers correctly, so if you get, if you guess right on the minutes between the fivesome of Len, Chandler, Monroe, uh, Bender, Chris, even Josh Jackson to an extent at small forward. Like, if you guess minutes right, you're set. If you don't, you're not set. Uh, those aren't the real games that I love to play. Um, if Booker doesn't play, who the hell knows what to do with this team? Uh, fire up the point guards, I guess. They just don't have the bodies. Fire up Josh Jackson, probably. 
So Minnesota sort of balanced in the mid tier of not awesome defense. Uh, so I want to pay attention to Booker first and foremost to see if he's got a decent look. Nothing jumps off the page at me immediately outside of I don't I don't trust any of this. For some reason TJ Warren isn't getting pulled. Oh, that's pulling from the wrong side. And that's pulling from the wrong side. I wish everybody had the same nomenclature. So this stuff looked normal. TJ Warren doesn't really rely much on the threes, is going to get to the rim, so I think TJ Warren just made the short list. I think Devin Booker is a fade spot here, especially with the potential injury news. And then nothing jumps out at me for the rest of it. I'll go to the Grizzlies. The more that I look at this slate, the more that I'm expecting to not play, but we'll see if I can put a lineup together as a placeholder that I like. Because um, if I can't do that, then I'm not going to look deeper um, towards lock without any very specific news that opens up you know, the ability to grab a bunch of T-Wolves or something. Or if, I don't know, like if... Uh, if Wiggins were somehow out, they would probably play Jamal Crawford enough to like open up value. Weird stuff like that. So Memphis is playing the Nets. 108.5 implied total, second highest. Um, but again, it's Memphis, so... Brooklyn is going to give up a ton of mid-range opportunities and limit the amount of threes. Um... While Gasol has been shooting a lot more threes than he ever has before, um, he's still getting half his shots in the mid-range. <clears throat> it shouldn't shock anyone that Marc Gasol is a great play tonight. It all depends on sort of where you can fit in the salary. It's tricky on FanDuel because of his center eligibility and not having the ability to split that sort of stuff up. And then, um, gonna be, oh my god, Mario Chalmers is $6,900 on FanDuel, that is insane. It's 34 and a half to hit 5x. I don't like Chalmers. My projections hate him. Um, but... He's going to get 30 minutes, and that might be all you need on a slate like this. He can get to 40 and 31. So, they're, you know, 31 and 29 minutes, or 32 and 29 minutes, we'll say, is still below 5x. That's He's never going to hit that number. I can't, I can't imagine wanting to, to book Chalmers for tonight. Dylan Brooks, on the other hand, at 4,900. Looks like it's possible. Seems like everybody is sort of the same person on um, on the Grizzlies. I'm going to mark down Dylan Brooks at that price. I don't love it, but again, I, I probably don't even have all of the positions at this point. It's ugly. DK is a little bit more open. Like Brooks, is, Brooks looks great on DK, and I think Jermichael Green looks great on DK. 4,400. He's almost a must-start. Jermichael Green, 6,200 on FanDuel, 4,400 on DK. Um, you should be starting Jermichael Green no matter what tonight. That's my thought process there. And then finally, we'll take a look at Brooklyn, another team I don't like. Um, 103 implied total. It's fourth for the night. You know, they're five and a half point dogs in Memphis. They're the later game. And I don't know what to make of this team. 
Nothing stands out immediately for me in cash, so I'm hoping that something stands out from the stats. And feel free to leave in the comments if you see if you're catching anything that I'm missing or disregarding anybody. You know, I'd love to hear a little bit more on this slate because it's a it's a grimy one. Simple as that. Um, Memphis. Okay, so Memphis is going to give up corner threes and shots at the rim. That's what I like to see. Alan Crabb, 53% or non corner threes and shots at the rim. Alan Crabb takes 53% of his shots from not the corner three. 60% at from three, which is giant. He doesn't get to the rim as much as I would have liked, but for now, uh, I don't love the projection, but 30 minutes, um, it makes Alan Crabb fit on the surface. Don't like it. I need to hear more about Quincy AC. I only have him projected for seven minutes, but in the past he's gone for 20. And if you expect him to get 20 minutes, he's a great spot. And then I think that Joe Harris, 67% threes, 24% shots at the rim. Uh, I only have him for 22 minutes, but 91% of his shots coming in the great spots. So Joe Harris it is. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Still, after about a month getting over that cold, it's been rough. After that, I can see maybe... I could see Spencer Dinwiddie. Or Damari Carroll. You're just kind of betting on who makes the threes, which is a little trickier. Um, but I'm going to say that that is like my, this is what I'm going to try to do list. Now let's see if I can make any of that work. So this was my first pass. Um, Gasol and Towns are the ones that pop at the bottom to start. And I end up with Booker in all three, and I don't like that. So the first thing I'm going to do is bomb out Booker. Let's see where we go from there. Um, this is definitely giving me Gasol and Towns again. So there are places where I think I'm going to need to lock in people. Right now that has, f it looks like four Minnesota guys are going to be necessary. I don't like the idea of fading Towns and Gasol but I want to see what it looks like if I lock Robin Lopez. So if I lock Robin Lopez at 49, I think it's going to allow me to do some more interesting stuff. Taj Gibson's a no-brainer. I think TJ Warren is a no-brainer. Um, and then... I think that makes Teague someone I need to have. And all of these guys are in all three of these lineups, so that's not super interesting. So I want to take a look and see what happens if I add... Where's Alan Crab? Is he a small forward on here? 3.7 for Crab. 4.7 value for Dylan Brooks. 4.4 4 for Joe Harris. So I'm going to put Joe Harris in to see what that opens up. I don't really want Dragic. So I don't think Joe Harris is the spot. This is a tricky one, folks. Nothing looks good. I need another power forward to go with Taj. And I don't really like anything else at power forward. Um, which means that I shouldn't pay up at power forward. So I'm thinking that 
Kelly Olenek might actually be the sneak tip play that opens up other junk. That can give me, not that I really want four dudes from Minnesota. I don't love the idea of Tyreek Evans. But I know that I need to have Wiggins, and I don't really have any other options at shooting guard that stood out for me. So maybe I can get off of Robin Lopez and go to Marc Gasol. I think this looks pretty tasty. For right now, this is going to be my placeholder. Um, Teagan Dunn, Tyreek Evans, and Wiggins. TJ Warren, Dylan Brooks, Taj and Kelly Olynyk, Marc Gasol. Um, I don't love the Kelly Olynyk spot, but three game slate. So that's where I'm at right now. That is, that's that's going to be a placeholder lineup for me. Whether or not I'm playing, I'll know closer to two. Um, no live before lock tonight. That would be, it's, there's no value in that. It would just be us uh, shooting the shit, which might be fun. I know that I need to go buy a Christmas tree today. Um, and I'm going to need to do some more junk around the house. And you guys don't need to hear about my chores for today. You guys just come here for daily fantasy advice. Um, recommend watching the recap video if you haven't. Uh, I had a pretty good night last night. And uh, the live feed last night was pretty fun. Um, which led me to unlocking the virtues of Pascal Siakam. Um, which was my big play for yesterday. That's it. Um, these three game slates are tricky. Uh, don't be afraid to take a night off. Sunday's always the best day to do that. Go watch some football, eat some leftovers. I've been eating turkey every day for the past couple days, which has been great. I'm going to be getting my new microphone. Supposed to be getting my new microphone in today. Um, so even though my voice is atrocious, it should sound a little bit clearer moving forward. Still atrocious from a tone perspective, but what are you going to do? That's where I'm at. Good luck tonight. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter or on the Reddit DFS or in the comments section here. I can get to all of it uh, immediately. Um, I would love for you guys to like and subscribe. We are getting dangerously close to the 10,000 view target for monetization, which is super cool. Um, and we're ju I'd just like to see more growth because uh, this is really fun for me and I wanna do this as much as I can, I'm contemplating expanding into maybe doing NFL for a month or so, um, just sort of walking through the way that I look at NFL. I barely play it, um, but I think it would be fun to use this sort of medium to spitball some of it. But we'll see. Um, I just want to do more because I think this is fun, and I think everybody else is having a good time. I hope everybody else is having a good time. Projections have been posted. They're out in the Google Sheet now. Find that link in the comments if you're looking for it. If you're looking for a uh, stick vacuum, the Dyson SV04 is down to $160. Thanks, Wirecutter Deals. Thanks, YouTube. I'll talk to you later.